After Codename Pizza beat the Zetsubo no Shima Easter Egg with no kills, my comments section got flooded with requests for me to do an Easter Egg in that same kind of style. And that got me thinking, what are the ways can you fundamentally break a map to where no one would have ever even considered doing something so stupid? Well, I beat the Moon Easter Egg without ever using a spacesuit, and I think that kind of ticks all the boxes of the stupid chart, so... I think I spent a good amount of time actually theory crafting this whole thing and let's get into it. Let's tackle the first big hurdle of ours here once we've got enough points from killing zombies down in no man's land and I've got enough points to open all of the doors. So after teleporting to the moon, you only have 15 seconds to put on a spacesuit before either dying out completely or taking it down if you do have quick revive. The only way to activate any areas of oxygen on the moon, you need to activate the power switch. Not even the airlock areas have oxygen before the power is turned on. This is where most people would assume that you could just run from the spawn area with quick revive, take it down, and then turn on the power switch no problem but that's not really how that works. You just don't have enough time to actually do that, sadly. I tried this out myself, and you take your first down in the beginning area of Tunnel 6, and by the time that you reach an airlock, you're just not going to have a good time. Even with perfect movement, you could barely turn on the power, but there's just no way to get to an area with any oxygen after that. So this is where we're going to require some cheese. Yeah, I know it kinda sucks, and I promise that I'm going to use this thing as minimally as possible, but I am going to need to use near-death experience a few times throughout this easter egg. And this opening bit is one of them. Either this isn't entirely possible or, you know what, I just kind of have to use a few gobble gums. And for anyone unfamiliar, near-death experience, as long as you have this gobble gum active and you have a quick revive, it will revive you continuously for three rounds, I think. I used it in this first area to get myself through the power area before instantly heading back to spawn to complete Samantha Says. And this is actually the hardest part of the fucking easter egg because I've got about six brain cells still working inside of my head and I kept messing up the order. And yeah, Samantha says is actually skill based as well because when you are inserting the code you only have a small amount of time to input that code so if you aren't careful then taking it down from running out of oxygen will run down your timer and you'll need to restart Samantha says. But after a while I figured out that inputting at least the first color will extend your timer. Yeah, strategic down is a thing apparently because once I know the pattern I would try to take it down right before putting it in, put in two patterns, and then take another down while the next one's running. For a simple game of Samantha Says, it took me about five minutes and that's really kind of sad actually, but after that I headed back to spawn where I began spinning my gobble gums for an immolation liquidation, that way I could spin the box to try to get the wave guns and the Gersh devices. Both of those are going to be required for this easter egg, and while I'm doing that I'm killing zombies because that helps me burn through rounds while waiting for tunnel 6 to begin excavating because I also need that for the first part of this easter egg. By the end of my first set of fire sales, I got the two things that I needed, which is actually a huge W, and the dubs only continued from there on because on round 6, tunnel 6 began excavating. That is super fucking early for Moon because I still have PTSD of 2011 where I would wait until round 20, sometimes round 30 before it would show up for the first time. I'm pretty sure everyone who's played Moon has that same shared memory because man, fuck the excavators. They come around less than my dad and that's just kind of, yeah, I'm sad now. This is also now a good time to point out that because of the excavating, Tunnel 6 and Tunnel 11 that came before it no longer have any oxygen in them, so staying in either of them is a death sentence for me. That makes it a real good thing that now I have to knife a giant ball through both of those tunnels to progress with this next step. I basically just have to knife it, run through an airlock so I don't die, and then run back out and repeat until I get through the tunnels. Admittedly, I spent way too much time in Tunnel 11 because I forgot where the first spot the ball goes was located, and I actually had to pause to look up a guide, so uh, yeah, after a few minutes of running around like a headless chicken, I finally got that done. Once we were through Tunnel 11, our next step was to just find the little tube in the labs where, in the process of doing that, my Widow's Y grenade went off a little bit too close to the windows and decompress the labs. Now the only areas left with oxygen are spawn and the biodome which makes my life significantly more difficult. Especially the labs because that is a huge portion of the map and I need to go through there quite a lot and the zombie spawns are super fast in there so that one's going to be a bit of a difficulty. Especially because our next step is to hack the wall panels inside of the labs and then hack four terminals within 60 seconds. For a lot of people this is difficult even with oxygen but without it I needed to get a good set of spawns 
problems for them where I was able to set two of them on the bottom floor, run into an airlock, hack a terminal on the middle floor, run for air, and then hack the last one on the top floor. And that's the thing, man. You don't realize how fast that 15 seconds of time that you have until you take it down passes in zombies because, man, like, seriously, it's not very much time at all. And that couldn't be any more true because our next step is filling the pyramid with souls for the first time. I need to be out in the middle of a area with no oxygen whatsoever, and I need to kill a bunch of zombies. So once again, my best play here was to run out of the airlock for a few seconds kill zombies near the pyramid and then immediately run back in and just hope that I don't die. A few of these runs down to the pyramid were insanely close to being deaths but at this point I was really getting a handle of how long I had before going down. And with that the MPD is open but we are not done yet. There's still quite a few more steps to go with this easter egg because on Black Ops 3 you can actually complete the entire easter egg in solo unlike on Black Ops 1. Because we have so much more to do and because I need to do something down there anyway Anyway, I headed back to Area 51 to pack punch all of my weapons and to get the plates from outside the map with my Gersh devices. Once that's done, I headed back to the moon and began spinning the mystery box again to get QEDs to replace my Gersh devices. This alone took me over 20 minutes and three full immolation liquidation gobble gums to get the fucking QEDs, which is just absolutely dreadful. Don't get me wrong, I love moon, but holy shit, I never understood why box rates weren't buffed on solo or there weren't side quests to get these things because this much box spinning just isn't fun. Anyway, once I got them, I was able to throw them at the plates and finally begin spamming the interact button on this computer for a solid two minutes straight. This is to charge up the golden rod and when most people are doing this step, you'll either have someone run around with a last zombie on co-op or if you're in solo, you'll usually get a crawler on Black Ops 1 and just run back and forth a couple of times before finishing the step. But not on Black Ops 3 because I wasn't able able to make a crawler and the last zombie which happened to be a really fast runner decided to pin me in the corner so I needed to kill it. When the next round started and I was in the process of fighting off zombies, um, one of the zombies decided to come in through the lab doors and set off my widow's wine again. Let's all say it together, fuck widow's wine. So now the spawn room is decompressed and there's no oxygen in there. So now I'm basically pinned inside of the small airlocks and I have to fight back an entire fresh round of zombies on round 21 inside of this tiny area. Not gonna lie to you, I think I shot my pants a couple of times during this. But once there was one zombie left, I was able to run back into spawn and finish off this step once and for all, thank fuck. There's only a couple more steps left and it's not really getting to get any easier. I wish I could say it did, but it didn't. Our next step is to fill up all four areas of the MPD with souls and the pressure of doing all four of these instead of the one that you did the first time around on top of the fact that spawn rates are higher led me to a few conclusions. Trying to complete the back tubes without taking any downs at all is essentially impossible. The zombies and you just don't move around quickly enough in the zero gravity to get there in time in order to fill up the tubes on top of the fact that there isn't monkey bombs on the map. So in order to just have zombies back there that you could run over and shoot, you would really have to get Gersh devices and the fact that I still need QEDs for the next step kind of negates that, so it really does make it impossible. Especially when you only have that 15 seconds of air and it's just, yeah. So during the step, I took three downs, which sucks, and it probably could have only been one or two, but I really think it's impossible with no downs. With that said, I finished off that final step and we are almost most done. There's two steps left to go and they're pretty easy actually. First what we're going to do is we're going to need to get Gersh devices back which took about 15 minutes and I was so excited about that that I didn't even bother getting my 600 points back from hacking the mystery box. I was just like yes let's fucking go I'm done with this. And the very very last step is we have to do Samantha Says but three more times with each of them getting progressively longer. After spending an embarrassingly long amount of time on them again, I threw a Gersh device at the giant ball next to the machine and finished off the moon easter egg without a spacesuit. This literally isn't possible without near death experience so I'm sorry if that upsets you. These videos aren't really meant for me to be like pushing the boundaries of what's possible in zombies, I just try to have fun and do some stupid shit so you know what, I don't really care because I had fun. Now go watch this video about me reaching round 50 with the worst gun in zombies history.